Coming up on the Real Country File, we're going to have a quick look around this combine that got delivered last week. Stephen is at an arbicultural show and Angela is having a look at a health and safety report around cattle handling and livestock. So firstly, let's have a look at this combine. So it is pretty much the same model as the last one that was replacing. That was also a Lexin 8700. It isn't fully PDI'd yet. Uh, there's a few changes around the back end there. The, the plastic guards used to come a lot lower and they had a number plate molded into it. Now it's gonna be on a metal bracket below. It has got the bendy auger, which means it'll stretch out to over 12 meters so that we can drive the combine in the same place as the, the drill drives and the grain trailers will also run in the same place. Doesn't really look a lot different, although the engine has now got about another 40 or 50 horsepower, I believe, compared to the previous model. So it's over well over 600 horsepower now. The other one was about 580. There's a few changes around the front. There's sort of like a, a new stone trap in the bottom of here now, which the other one didn't have. And then the main changes, to be honest, are in the cab. So if we pull this handle here, we'll go and have a look what's going on in the cab. So now we've got a whole new sort of cab interior. We've got the main thing is the fridge door opens the opposite way and we now have a lettuce rack. Um, we've got smaller pillars. So these pillars have been narrowed off to allow greater vision. We've also got a lot more storage space. We've got like more food storage containers. We've got four cup holders in it. So we, sorry, we've got more than that. We've got two there, one there, and then some more at the bottom down there which will be very, very handy when we're doing the combine run from John O'Groats to Land's End on this particular machine. But the climate control up there, radio, and obviously the GPS screens. This is all pretty standard, the same as the other one, this armrest. You've got forwards and backwards on there, all your header controls on here, emergency stop, real controls, GPS on and off is that one, revs are here, and then you've also can control all your functions on your screen with this scroller here. I'll just turn the ignition on so you can see. We still have a printer in for printing out field records. So after you've finished the field, you can print out the tons that come off it, the moisture and the time and the diesel used. You get your hands-free buttons here for the radio. Um, and you've got a radio. Uh, you've got your handbrake there and then this controls all the settings in the threshing. So you've got your drum, fan speeds, riddles, rotors main thresher on and off, header on and off. That is now the GPS screen, it's a bigger one up there. You've also got the camera on the auger there as well as a reversing camera, which if I do that, might come on the screen if it's set up correctly. No, it's not, actually it's not plugged in yet. Part of the PDI. Um, yeah, there's all your main controls on there anyway, and obviously the steering wheel goes up and down. Hopefully if it's as good as the last one, it should do around 150 acres a day. Anyway, no doubt you will see more of this in the coming weeks as it goes from John O'Groats to Land's End. I'm going to put a link below to the Just Giving page because it is a page and it's got all the information on of the route. So you can go and check it out. Now let's see how Andrew's got on with his health and safety report around cattle hand uh, livestock handling. So we've had a peak farmers event today and it's been based around health and safety. We've spoke about slurry gases, cattle handling, and the fire brigade have been here as well, talking about um, how it's easiest to get in touch with them, um, about moorland fires and things like that. Um, so we run Peak Farmers. It's uh, funded through a FIPL grant, which is Farming in Protected Landscapes. Today has been a really useful day. We've had about over 40 farmers come for today, which um, is a great, great attendance. A lot of people involved, a lot of really useful questions asked. Um, and one of the key takes that I took was from the fire brigade, which came to talk about moorland fires and um, how to help them when if you have an issue on your farm. And they were really promoting the What Three Words app, which is a very useful app, which um, I'd encourage anyone to download for if you ever need the emergency services. It takes um, the emergency services directly to where they need to be on your farm if you've had an accident or if there is a fire. Um, but one thing they did point out was make sure that you've spelled the three words needed in that to get your location exactly right or there could be issues and they might not end up in exactly where they should be, which they said they've had previously.
And I'm here now with um, Richard, who's been talking to us about cattle handling safety. So, Richard, just give us a, a few pointers. What are, what are your main themes that you've been telling people about today? Well, we've been looking at the handling systems, the systems used by the farmers to handle the cattle, keep them under control and keep themselves safe. And you've been talking to start with about actually, you know, how best to corral cattle and um, put them in a race and so on. So what, what points were you mentioning about the gate system? And well, we were, we were mentioning the fact that you need a, a funnel system with the, the gates, the race, which brings them into the crush. Uh, although this race doesn't have it, it's probably quite a good idea to actually board the sides of the, sides of the race so that the cattle... Uh, follow it down, they can't see where they're going, they'll just follow the one in front and uh, it's a good way of getting them into the crush and it's quite a cheap way of uh, improving the equipment. And if you've got a cow which you know is a little bit flighty, shall we say, or excitable, then I think, what, what were you saying about the best way of organising them? In terms well, the best of... way to organise one that you think might get a bit excited uh, would be to make sure it comes through the crush early, because the last thing you want is it to be the last one through, uh, when it would probably not want to come and you'd probably have to get the others back to get it through. So it's always best to get it first. But it is amazing, actually, isn't it, that they do follow each other. Once, once one goes and it seems to uh, be happy with that, then, uh, then yeah, obviously yeah. the herd instinct kicks in. But with this particular crush, you've been showing us a very unique... I mean, obviously, to, we've got the, the scoop here, the, the neck scoop, which would tip up on an angle, wouldn't it, to go underneath their chin. Yeah, we've got a scoop here, which, which is a really useful bit of kit. Um, it holds the head up so that they can't thrash the heads around, uh, injure themselves or other injure the person working with them. Uh, but it is quite an expensive bit of kit. So there is an alternative that a few people have got and others could have, and that's the neck restraining rope, which is quite simply a rope which goes over the head of the uh, animal that's in the crush, just behind the ears, doesn't hurt it, but it puts a little bit of pressure on and it's very easy to pull the head down in the yoke. Once it's down, lock it into the, the gadget there, and, and we've got the animal under control. It can't jump about, it won't hurt itself, and when we need to release it, all we've got to do is pull the rope, and it's away. And that only costs a few pounds, so it's an alternative uh, that does a similar thing to the scoop. Okay, but just uh, keeps people um, safer in terms of actually keeping the animal as still as possible for whenever you want to work with yeah, it. It does, exactly right, yeah. So it protects the animal from injuring itself, but it also protects the operator from being hit by the animal's head as it tries to escape, usually. <laughs> So what have we been learning about farm safety and tractors and machinery? OK, so HSE Agriculture Sector has got a, a work right campaign that has just been released this spring. So it's looking at uh, vehicles, moving vehicles on farms, because moving vehicles are the most common cause of fatalities on uh, GB farms. So it's split into three areas, which are safe farm, safe driver and safe vehicle. Um, so there's some really good kind of practical guidance and tips on there. Um, and I'm sure you'll share the link, but it was just things about visibility, about perhaps wearing high-vis clothes, perhaps mirrors for uh, around corners in, in a farmyard, thinking about lighting in a farmyard. And then for the vehicle, thinking about maintenance uh, and making sure that your brakes are working and it's well maintained and the safe stop procedure when you get off the vehicle. So always make sure you put your handbrake on, put your gears into neutral, um, and that you stop the vehicle completely and take the keys out before you then start to do any work 
around the vehicle um, so that there's no risk of you being crushed or uh, injured by the vehicle. And then in terms of a safe driver, it's making sure that you're, you're trained for the vehicle that you're going to be using um, and that you're knowledgeable about how, how that vehicle operates and what its capabilities are. I'd encourage you to have a look at the, the, the campaign that's been released by HSE Agriculture Sector. Thanks for that, Anza. Now over to Stephen, who's been at an arboricultural show looking at some smart looking tractors. Lots of chainsaw action around me today and some very interesting machines. I am at the Arboricultural Association show and I will be uh, filming a few interesting bits of kit and maybe a bit of tree climbing. Thanks for that, Stephen. Now, what do you think? Should the five litre straight arm be our next challenge on the Real Country Files? Should we start having a bit of a competition around that? Let us know in the comments. If you've made it this far, click like and subscribe. That is about all for this week, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.